This evening I'm going to be reading chapter 5 of The Christian Archetype, a Jungian commentary on the life of Christ by Edward F. Edinger. Chapter 5 is about the triumphal entry into Jerusalem. This quote from Dr. Jung, from C.G. Jung Speaking, page 98, begins the section. We all must do just what Christ did. We must make our experiment. We must make mistakes. We must live out our own vision of life. And there will be error. If you avoid error, you do not live. And this quote from the biblical text, and when they drew nigh unto Jerusalem and were come to Bethpage, unto the Mount of Olives, then sent Jesus two disciples, saying unto them, Go into the village over against you, and straightway ye shall find an ass tied and a colt with her. Loose them, and bring them unto me. And if any man say aught unto you, ye shall say, The Lord hath need of them, and straightway he will send them. All this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell ye the daughter of Sion, Behold, thy king cometh unto thee, meek and sitting upon an ass, and a colt the foal of an ass. And the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them, and brought the ass and the colt, and put on them their clothes, and they set him thereon, and a very great multitude spread their garments in the way. Others cut down branches from the trees and strawed them in the way. And the multitudes that went before and that followed cried, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Matthew 21, 1 through 10. The culminating drama of Christ's life begins with that strange incident, the triumphal entry into Jerusalem. At this moment, he succumbs to the power temptation and allows himself to be hailed as a king. And no sooner does he enter Jerusalem than he falls into a rage. Quote, And Jesus went into the temple of God and cast out all them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves and said unto them, It is written, My house shall be called the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. Matthew 21, 12 through 13. The bad mood continues on the following day when he curses a fig tree because it had no fruit to offer him. Matthew 21, 19. His manner of entry into Jerusalem indicates that Christ explicitly identifies himself with the messianic king foretold in Zechariah 9, 9. Quote, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, Thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding upon an ass, and upon a colt, the foal of an ass. Unquote. Over identification with an archetypal image is exceedingly dangerous, and yet Christ's destiny seems to require it as the dark aspect of the incarnation process. His anger against the money changers violates his own injunction against anger, Matthew 5, 22, and indicates that money was an aspect of his shadow. However, this one-sidedness was necessary as part of his destined task to set up a spiritual kingdom over and against the crude materialism of the time. As Jung says in The Temptation, Jesus voluntarily exposed himself to the assault from within of the imperialistic madness that filled everyone, conqueror and conquered alike. Exposure of the ego to such unconscious forces always generates some degree of possession or identification, 
even if only partial and temporary. Also, the transformation drama cannot unfold without the ego succumbing to necessary error, Felix Culpa. And the footnotes for that are the development of the personality, Collected Works 17, paragraph 309, and egocentricity is a necessary attribute of consciousness and is also its specific sin. Mysterium Conjunctionis, Collected Works 14, paragraph 364. So I've been reading chapter 5 of The Christian Archetype, a Jungian commentary on the life of Christ.